Hey, in my previous video we discussed a little bit about light. I showed you some silly examples about the light in my kitchen and then here in my dining room and I thought I gonna continue a little bit more about light. If you want to see my previous video I put the link up there so you can you can take a look at it. But hey, here I wanted to show you a bit more examples of my pictures. By the way, with these kind of videos when a photographer shows you something and tells you something, I think it's important to show pictures. And if you like the pictures, you should pay attention to what I or somebody else says. If you don't like the pictures, just ignore me. I mean, that's only fair. So I'll, I'll try to show you some f uh, pictures and now let's look at the light. Let, don't pay so much attention to what I photographed, what's the subject. Just let's take a look at the light. So here are some of my favorite considerations what comes to light. First, the direction of the light. My favorite way to sh photograph is directly towards the light. Now when you photograph against the light, one of the challenges is that you lose a lot of details and the light coming towards you sort of masks the grays out and you get pretty much black and white. But I like that, I like the dramatic effect that gives to my pictures. I mean, you always, when you gain something, you lose something. I guess that's, <laughs> that's called life. Um, now, the other possibility, of course, is that you put the light source to the side. You get pictures like this. And then finally, you can put the light behind you. I mean, um, and then uh, this seems to be the most advocated and, and, and sort of uh, suggested way of taking pictures that uh, you put the light behind you. A lot of photo books and, and educators say that's the way to do it. I find this the most boring and uninteresting way. Your pictures easily turn out flat and not three-dimensional at all. I mean you get a lot of shades and a lot of nuances but they to me are very uninteresting often so I typically try to avoid this. You get pictures like this Also, when you take pictures so that the light is behind you, you need to worry about yourself and your shadow getting into the picture, so there's that too. Then there is a consideration of the light source. You might have one single light source and you get pictures like this. And then you might get really diffused light. Light comes from and reflects from all sources, you know. You get a lot of light coming from different directions at the same time. And you get pictures like this. Then of course there's an extreme. I mean you can make the light source a part of your picture. Make the light source the subject of your pitch. I mean, that's pretty extreme, but then you get pictures like this. Then uh, I like to photograph in darkness when there is very little light and then you almost just want to implicate you want to give a hint of light, but you don't want to let the light ruin your darkness. I mean, it's a darkness that you photograph, don't let the light ruin that. And don't try to turn your uh, night into day. You know, what I, what I hate about automatic light measurements, either with my phone or with my camera, is that 
in the dark conditions they try to lighten up my day and that's not what I want. I want it to keep sort of dark and all that so yeah but it depends on what you want. I like darkness. Pictures like this. And then if you shoot color pictures, there's of course the consideration of the color of the light. In the middle of the day you get all the wavelengths from the sun and you get pictures like this. Comes night, early morning um, and the light comes from the very low angle, you start to have different colors in your light and then you get pictures like this. Also artificial light is a totally different color and once again you need to take that into account. You might get pictures like this. And so there's a lot of considerations what comes to light, as you can see. And sometimes these are even more important than the subject itself. Actually, to me, it often is the case that I'm more interested in the light. How the light makes me feel, that I'm about the subject. And it often happens to me that I'm ready to take a picture of something interesting. But I don't take it, I don't press the shutter release because the light is not right. And then in some other cases I don't really have anything particular to photograph, but the light is in something that, you know, catches my attention and my eye and I just want to photograph the light. I'm fascinated by the light. By the way, <coughs> uh, commenting my last video, EJ Orr asked me how do I measure the light. So I thought I'd give you a little bit, you know, I'll, I tell you how I do that. It's not, it's not rocket science, but you know. Uh, first of all, um, I have a lot of cameras that don't have light meter, like my Mamiya C220. I don't have a light meter in this and even if I do, like in my Rolleiflex or in my Pentax Spotmatic, I don't use those light meters a lot. I rely on my phone and here I have an app called um, uh, My Light Meter Pro. Uh, I like this a lot. I don't need any extra accessories to my phone and this is really surprisingly accurate. Even in the hugely dark conditions. It gives me the EV numbers that I use with cameras with EV numbers like Hasselblad and then it gives me just uh, the aperture and the speed and I can set the ASA numbers here. Really useful um, and as I said surprisingly accurate. The other one that I use quite a bit is very simple uh, Seconic L208. Now I don't use a spot meter I don't like that way of measuring the light. If I would take more portraits, maybe spot meter would be the way to go, but I don't. I typically shoot landscape, street, you know, fine art, and I use this kind of an overall light meters as follows. I first go and measure the overall light. I get a feeling of the room, if you will, and I try to point it to the highlights and lowlights and get the overall feeling. Then I look at my scene. What do I really want to photograph? What's my story? Now, this is so important to me. Like, my light meter doesn't have feelings, so it doesn't know what I want to get out of that picture. It just gives me a number. But I need to come up with the story. So if I think that this is a light, bright thing that I want to photograph, I overexpose. A good example is a snowy landscape that I always overexpose one or two stops because my light meter always thinks that whatever I point it at, that's medium gray. It doesn't know that I'm pointing at white snowbank. It thinks that okay whatever there is that should be gray 
and it gives me the gray numbers. And if I just put these numbers to my camera, I get gray. But I don't want gray snow, I want white snow, so I need to overexpose. If I'm out in the middle of the November night, street photographs, I want to get that darkness, that miserable northern November night into my pictures, and I just measure it with my light meter, it thinks it's, you know, happy medium gray. No, I want it dark, I want it black, so I underexpose. So with my light meter I get the overall feeling, but then I think, what do I want to get out of that? I, sounds complicated, but it really isn't. Like, think about your light meter as a stupid uh, aid that just wants to make everything grey. And this is how you get the grey. If you want light, you overexpose. If you want dark, you underexpose. One or two stops. Black and white film especially gives you a lot of wiggle room. You can go two stops, even three stops over, like overexpose it. And it just goes nicely there, most of the black and white films. Underexposing is a little bit more challenging. You might lose all the nuances and you just get dark. Sometimes that's also good. Like you need to think about these things. Don't trust your light meter. Uh, if you go to color positive, that's the most challenging. It has much less latitude than any other film. And it's like a digital film or digital cameras that you don't want to overexpose. It just burns through. Uh, underexposing it, not so, so dangerous. Um, so you need to know the film you are using. Most wiggle room, black and white, color negatives, you can overexpose it. Don't underexpose. Color positive. You can underexpose it a little bit. Don't overexpose it. And this gives you always mid gray. You get my thinking? So, hey, I showed you some examples. Um, what's my conclusion? Um, I try to think about light before I take the picture. What do I want to get out of that picture? Is the light right? It doesn't matter if this is the most gorgeous landscape that I'm looking at. If the light is not right, it's not worth photographing. And even if it's the crappy backyard that I'm looking at, if the light is right, it might be an excellent pitch. That's the marching order in my mind. Uh, then I move around. I, I want to see how the light changes if I move around a bit. Uh, lazy pictures are such that I just go... <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> So lazy pictures are the ones that I just go and shoot. I hate lazy pictures. I want to walk around and see how my landscape and my subject changes when I move around. And it mostly changes because of the direction of the light. So the direction of the light is really important. My favorite most of the time against light. Uh, just be aware of light. Uh, and think about it like how your camera will see the light. Your eyes, as I explained in my previous video, will compensate the amount of light. And you can be more descriptive, you can be more aggressive with your camera. And you can really make your blacks black and your brights bright with your camera, but you need to think about it. Overexpose, underexpose. Play with light, go with light and treat your cameras nicely, don't throw them around like I do. See you later.